Just five months after the death of Australian cricketing great Rod Marsh, his family, former teammates and the South Australian Cricket Association are in a race against time to get started on a fitting memorial to the tre tremendous, legendary wicketkeeper batsman at the Adelaide Oval. Marsh's funeral saw cricketing royalty from around the country gather in March at Adelaide Oval, where the former West Australian star had been a regular for more than 30 years after he stopped playing because he ran the National Cricket Academy in Adelaide and later served on the SACA board. A memorial has been designed to highlight a spirit of cricket theme so dear to Bacchus as he was known, with a meeting place centred around a wattle tree featuring an image of Marsh diving for a catch behind the stumps and a pair of his gloves bronzed and on display. The Cricket Association is now looking for donations so that Rod's widow, Roz, can turn a sod on the project and plant that tree at the start of the next Adelaide Oval Test in early December. Joining me now is the SACA president, Andrew Sinclair, in Adelaide. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. First up, tell us about the significance of the wattle, the, the, the golden wattle, when it comes to Rod Marsh and his cricketing memory. Thanks, Chris. Rod really started the Australian Test Team tradition of singing their little poem or chant after play uh, that commences under the Southern Cross. I stand a sprig of wattle in my hand. So because that's become a tradition that was, when we contemplated what was the appropriate way to recognise him, family suggestion from Rod's niece was, why don't you plant a wattle? So that really, from the genesis of that became, he was all about meetings and being with people and sharing time. So it became a meeting place. And also the concept that Rod was bigger than just South Australia and even West Australia. So it was he's so much part of the spirit of cricket. So it grew from from the wattle and the poem. Yeah, it's a great idea because, you know, memorials are wonderful and the statues are wonderful, but this is something mm. different. And incorporating the wattle and also uh, the spirit of cricket was so important to Rod, the, the, you know, that, that spirit of the game. And so that's why mm. you've made it a meeting place. It'll be out the back of the, the grandstand where a lot of cricketers and cricket supporters will be hanging out. It really will be. It's, it'll form a useful meeting place because it's right out the back of... Adelaide Oval number two during test match, we get thousands of people out there, so it gives you a chance to meet them. It's available to the public every other non-event day. The public can go there and contemplate Rod Marsh, the spirit of cricket, and what it means to them. And we'd all remember, well, those that are old enough, 1977, the centenary test, it was Rod that had caught Derek Randall at 160-odd and said that having had Derek Randall given out, said, no, I'll call him back because the ball didn't carry, notwithstanding Rod said later on, I didn't call him back because he didn't hit it. Because it didn't carry. Yeah, because it didn't right. carry. Yeah, well, it's, uh, it, it is fantastic because that, that, that's what we want to keep in cricket. And, and Rod Marsh, tough competitor, but as you say, mm. uh, so fair and, and in keeping with that spirit. Tell us about the reaction from Roz and the rest of the family and also Rod's former teammates. They all want to support this and you're looking for people to contribute to it? Yes, so Roz I've dealt closely with over it. I didn't want to do anything that she did not want to be part of. So met with the family back in uh, June, put the concept to her of planting a wattle and having uh, the memorial at the back of the Adelaide Oval. She was emotional and thought it was quite appropriate. Then put some designs to her a month later in July and it's absolutely appealed to her and all the other players, uh, Lily Chapels, uh, brother Graham Marsh is looking like coming out back from America for the opening. And the aim is to raise $200,000. It's not a cheap, uh, build, but it will, we've got to dig up Ashfield. And the aim is to actually open it completed, not just turn aside and have it completed on the first day of the Adelaide Test match. So we're looking to raise $200,000 uh, as quickly as we possibly can. And there's a, now on the Australian Sports Foundation publicly accessible link. You can Google the Australian Sports Foundation. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll, show, I'll show our viewers that in a second, uh, Andrew. That's fantastic. So it's a bit uh, even more rushed than I said. You want to get the thing up and running and opened uh, for that first test in uh, December. That's against the Windies, isn't it? Against the West Indies. Again, a great uh, arch enemy, I suppose. You look at Clive Lloyd, Viv Richards and all those test matches that so many of us loved and Rod Marsh was behind the stumps. So it seems appropriate. Yeah, spot on. Well, thanks for joining us, Andrew, and good luck with that. Appreciate it.
Thank you, Chris. Andrew Sinclair there, who's the president of the South Australian Cricket Association. Now, if you want to donate or you want to pass the information on to others, just go to the Australian Sports Foundation homepage, asf.org.au. You click on the Donate button and then just search for Rod Marsh and it'll take you to the page where you can donate to this wonderful memorial. It'll be great to see that opened at the Adelaide Test in December, if possible.